In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add this Synology RS1221 Plus into an LTS system to get more storage. We are on the website of this NAS system, and if we scroll down to the website, we will see the functionality of the system. This can be rack mounted, but it doesn't come with the screws to rack on the mount, so you will have to prepare some. Now just a quick look on this unit. You can use the regular size hard drive or the SSD hard drive, and this has 8 slots to it. And on this model, you can put up to 108 terabytes. Only certain hard drives are compatible with this unit. So here we are at this compatibility list and we're gonna choose our model which is our RS1221 plus and we're gonna choose that we're gonna be using hard drive. If we scroll down we can see a bunch of hard drive we can choose from. Because we're using for surveillance only we're gonna change the class to only surveillance. So this is how many we can use. I've tried using the WD purple. The NAS system recognizes it but when it is trying to integrate with the LTS MVR it was not working. And also not every Seagate hard drives are compatible and in this case we're going to be using the 6 terabyte hard drive so let's start going to the NAS itself so we're going to type in the address or using the find Synology portal and here we go welcome let's set up our Synology click on install on this page we have to install the disk station manager it does not have one built in because it has to be uploaded to the hard drive so we're going to go to the download center and we choose our model and just download whatever that is the latest so we're going to click on browse and choose the file that is ending in .pat so click on next at this point it is going to tell you how many hard drive has been detected so go ahead and check i understand all data will be deleted continue and now it is going to install the package now the interface has been installed click on start so here we're going to start activating the NAS so we can give it a name i'm going to put my NAS but we cannot put space here we cannot really use admin here it is just going to tell you please use an account name that is not admin and for password we have to use four different combinations numbers uppercase letter lowercase letter and assign so we're going to choose this password click on next i'm going to choose menu update or we can create an account to receive more benefits right now i'm just going to skip and uh, it is also going to ask us to collect data you can choose that you don't have to click on submit and now we are inside of the NAS interface so it is going to ask us to create a storage pool go ahead and create now so on this page it is going to teach us like what it is so we have a bunch of hard drives which is a storage pool and uh, we're going to call this pool as a volume like a folder so click on start and on this we have the RAID type there are three options to choose from and here's the description you can read in this case we're going to choose the basic because we want to use all the hard drives inside the NAS and we can give it a name I'm just going to call it NVR and it's going to let you choose which hard drive you want to use for this volume I'm going to choose all of it which is only one click on next this is a hard drive check if your hard drive is brand new we can skip that and here it is going to allocate some people like to not use all of the hard drive they like to keep some space for some other surfaces but here we're going to max out the capacity so click on max and we can click on next and here we have a file system since the LTS NVRs is running in Linux here we're going to choose the ext4 click on next and here we can confirm our settings click on apply and now it is going to officially create the volume all right it is done extended warranty we can skip for it now and now we can see our volume is being optimized and let's just wait for it to finish now it is done it's saying it is healthy that is the good news and now we're going to go to the file station because we need to create a share folder to start recording so click on ok so we can give it a name and here the recycle bin i'm not sure if we're going to actually use it i'm just going to keep it there and uh, uncheck the restriction to admins only next increase we don't need this so next advanced settings we don't need it next and here we're just going to confirm the settings all right now this is very important we're going to have to configure the user permissions here we're going to put everyone to be able to read and write so check all these three click on apply come back to permissions we can choose a different one check all of these we can also choose the next one say to save all these settings come back and hit yes so it will save all the settings so now everyone can read and write and next we have this advanced permissions we don't need any of this and then we have this nfs permissions the nfs service is not enabled so we're going to go to the nsf service then it's going to take us to file service and nfs go ahead and enable that and choose nfs v4.1 click on apply all right now we can go back to the share folder choose the volume edit come back to this nfs permissions create and we're going to set a rule of which ip address can talk to this nest so we're going to look at the nvr 
grab the local IP address of the NVR. Okay, now we have our IP address. The privilege is to keep it at read and write. For the mapping settings, I'm going to choose map all users to guess. And for security, we don't have to choose anything. And next, we're going to allow the connections from non-privileged ports. Click on that. And also allow users to access the mounted subfolder. Click on save. Now the NFS permission is set up. Click on save. And pretty much we are done on the NAS side. Now we can go to the NVR. So we should go to configuration, storage, and storage management. And then we're gonna click on NAS HDD. And we're gonna click on search. The server address is the NAS address. So grab the IP address. Or we can also see that from our network settings. Go to network interface. And each port has its own IP address. And right now we have our LAN 4 connected. And that is our local IP address. So copy that, put it in the server address, and click on search. It is going to search for the file path that we have set up from the NAS. Select that and click on OK and then hit save. Okay, so now we can refresh the page. We can go to schedule settings and come back to storage management. As we can see, we have our six terabytes show up. Right now it is an initialized. So let's go ahead and initialize it. Check the hard drive, click on format and click on OK. Right now it is done. So now the hard drive status is normal. That means it is ready for recording. And pretty much what you want to do is just confirm that your motion detection settings or continuous recording settings is done correctly. And we're pretty much done here. I'm going to put my one demo camera uh, to record continuously. I click on save. Right now, the blue dot is telling me that it is recording continuously. And uh, to show you, I'm going to, to show you. This is the camera that I'm recording. See? I have my finger moving it. All right, so the time is about 18 hours, 27 minutes. Uh, we can check that if we have any recording. So we're gonna go to playback and uh, we're gonna choose our camera. We have some recording on the timeline. We're gonna click on play. So that is a little bit about 30 seconds of footage that has been recorded. And here, this is our part where I was showing and that's pretty much it. And here is some pro tip. Even though we can go to our NAS station and we see the folder from the NVR, then we can see, okay, they're recording. Like we can see our MP4, but we cannot just download it because what we're seeing here is like a like space ticker, really without any recording. So how you would want to download the playback is to go to playback, you know, use your Google Chrome. And here we have the recording that we want to download. Uh, we want to go to this bottom right hand side and there's a download button, click on it. It's going to have a pop-up window and uh, these are the actual recording that has been recorded. If you know the exact time, we can search. So let's say we want to download uh, this 10 minute video. So we're going to check it and click download. While it is downloading, we can click on this open folder. And then you're going to have a folder that is opened up in your text file. And it has this new folder with the file name. So now we're just going to wait for it to finish downloading. And also we cannot just view the video like this. We have to download a certain video player because the footage has been compressed in the H.264 format. So we're going to go to the LTS website, put your mouse at support and click on download. And it's going to take you this page. So we're going to download this video player for the Platinum series. And the video player is called VS Player. And here is the VS Player. You can open up the video with the VS Player. Uh, it's going to have a list on the left. And here we have our 10 minute video. And you can just you know take your time. And there are also so many other stuff that you can do. And this is just like a regular video player, but specifically for CCTV. If you want to submit the video footage to the police, uh, all you have to do is have the VS player downloaded and installed in your USB and also put the video footage inside the same USB and let the police know to use this player. And that is pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have learned something new in this video, please like the video and let me know. That will make my day a lot. Subscribe if you want to see me again. And I'll see you in the next video.